welcome to start the recording. Uh, thanks for uh, joining us this morning. So I, I give this morning a, a talk regarding advances in the Fornit of our net scheme and, and for learning multimodal inversions models. What I refer to uh, for multimodal inversion here would be a situation where you have different data sources and, and you'd like to reconstruct a given state. Okay, so it's multimodal in the sense you have different uh, observation data sources. Not necessarily, and the state here won't be multiple, like, but, but we, we may discuss this. And, and, and here, the idea is to investigate how we can use a 40 net scheme. So, the scheme we develop for learning a variational data simulation models and solvers, and, and how we can use the flexibility of this scheme to address uh, this kind of multimodal inversion. And as a case study, um, I'll use the uh, reconstruction of the SSH and, and synergies between sea surface temperature and, and sea surface height. Uh, do not hesitate to raise questions in the chat or just to uh, interrupt me during, during the, the presentation if you like more details on some aspects or if anything is unclear. Okay. Uh, so basically, the, the case study I consider is, is this one. So basically, the, the mapping of the sea surface height uh, from satellite data. So the uh, in main data uh, source here is uh, satellite altimetry. So the direct measurement of the sea surface height. And uh, it, it's, it's uh, this multimodal uh, inversion uh, problem is, is very uh, um, common in, in space uh, oceanography because there are many different types of satellites and different types of sensors and different types of products. So um, quite naturally, there's this question raising whether you might be able to use different types of data sources to, to get a better reconstruction of, of the, uh, in my case, the sea surface height. But we, I, I would expect the, the kind of method I would explain today might be, it might, uh, transfer to any kind of uh, situation where you have different data sources uh, and, and like to, you know, you'd like to address some mapping or forecasting or any kind of space-time reconstruction. Okay, so basically my case study would be uh, this one. So I assume I have uh, altimetry data on one side. So here I consider NADAR altimetry and SWOT altimetry. So you see the SWOT refer to the what's of data here. This typically, and, and here you have uh, narrow lines. Those lines refer to the uh, NADAR uh, activity data. So that's a direct measurement of the state we'd like to reconstruct. And the question would, would be whether, uh, assuming we have at the same uh, time and with at the beginning with the same uh, spatial resolution, we have some additional observation of the sea surface temperature. And the goal here would be to know whether we can use this additional SST uh, data to get a better reconstruction and better interpretation of, of the SSH. Um, and, and knowing how we can address this. So before going into the 4D Varnet, I'll go first uh, with uh, just a, a very quick review of the variational data assimilation formulation and, and different ways we could use to uh, address this multimodal inversion within this framework. And then I'll move to the uh, Forniva net uh, formulation for, for based on those uh, ideas. So basically to address this kind of uh, inversion problem and mapping problem, we can consider a, a, a variational data simulation framework, which is based on some kind of state space formulation. So you define your state so basically here, the state will be the sea surface height, the gap-free uh, space-time uh, series. And you, you, for this, you state some dynamics. So you state a dynamical model for the uh, space-time evolution of the state. And you have the observation model here. And in, in the case of altimeter data, the observation model is very simple because you assume you have a direct ob observation of the state. So basically the observation where at the pixels where you have the observation is, is basically if the state plus some noise and uh, usually it goes from noise. So uh, some kind of identity observation operator. So based on this, one way to state the inversion is to state this as a minimization problem with two terms. 
one terms refer to the observation term so based on the observation equation here and and this term here is the uh, prior relates to the uh, dynamical prior where phi here would be the flow operator so basically the implementation of the numerical integration of the dynamical uh, equation so providing the forecast of the state from some uh, given initial condition and overall uh, that would be the, the kind of formulation I, I use I don't know whether okay so I, I use this kind of uh, matrix based formulation which is just a reformulation in some matrix based uh, uh, statement of this uh, variational cost okay and and you see here in the end you have the same two terms these terms here is the uh, data fidelity term or observation term where you just compare the state and the observation uh, omega refers to the mask so here x and y refer to your space time states okay you do not see anymore the the time variable t here that it's still it's still there meaning that x is the c surface height over given uh, space time window okay typically would be something over, from over a week in 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 in, in time and and for in practice we consider a, a space domain over it like 10 degrees by, by 10 degree domain and and you see that here you have the uh, dynamical prior where uh, in terms of probably more machine learning or signal processing you can look at phi as some kind of projection operator and, and you measure how the state x is is well described by the uh, projection operator phi okay so but if you so that's here it's a monomodal in the sense here you, you just consider one uh, observation uh, data which is the altimeter data and then there are different ways to solve for 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 this okay so here my, my point is not to, to say okay now I, i'd like to move to the uh, multimodal uh, setting so i'd like to know how to uh, reformulate the associated state space formulation to 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 go for this uh, multimodal setting. Uh, so again, what I have here, I have the SST data. So basically, I refer to this as Z. Uh, the altimetry uh, would be uh, the observation would be uh, Y, and the uh, this uh, or I refer to SSH as uh, Y. Okay, X would be the state. And, and Y variable would be the observation data. Um, there, 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 there might be two ways, okay, to, to address the uh, multimodal inversion within uh, this uh, variational data simulation framework. The first way could be to say that instead of considering for the state only the SSH, we con can consider what I re refer here as a multimodal state, meaning that the state to be inverted would be both the SSH and the SST. So here, meaning that the X tilde is uh, both the uh, uh, SSH component, XY, and the uh, SST component, XZ, okay? If, if I do this, then I have to define the observation operator both for the uh, SSH state, which is just the same as before, and for the ACST, that's just the same. If I assume I have directly the SST observation, then the observation operator for the SST component is just the same as uh, uh, some identity operator. So here, instead of two terms, I have three terms in my variational framework. The two first terms refer to the observation term, one for the altimeter data, and the other one for the SST data. And the last term here is the same as before, but now the phi operator should encode both information in space and time for the SSH and the SST and probably for the uh, dependence, the relationship between the two, uh, two states. So what the, 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 the only question here is the, the kind of dynamical model we can state for uh, this uh, multimodal state and the way we can define this, okay? I'll come back on, on this later. The second option is to say, okay, I, I, I don't want to uh, change my, my state, so they, because I don't want to reconstruct the SSD, 
Okay, the, the really my, my interest is, is in getting the SSH. So I keep my state as X just as the uh, SSH component. And then the question would be whether I can define some other observation operator to relate the SST observation and the, um, okay, here, there is something wrong, to relate the SST observation and the state X. So one typical way would be, okay, here again, I will have to, uh, uh, so meaning that I need to define here the observation operator for relating the SST and the SSH. So a typical way would be that it, there might be, there might exist some operator H from which you can predict the SST from the SSH. Okay, that would be the most common way to, to state this. You could, you could think about just the reverse. Uh, some operator from which you can predict the SSH from, from the SST. That again here, in terms of the uh, variational formulation, you'll get three terms. Um, one for the altimeter data, one for the more of the synergy between the SST and the SSH, and the last term be, being just the same, but here the phi operator encode just the space-time dynamics for the SSH, just one component, okay? Uh, you see that you can combine the two uh, multimodal formulations. You can combine a multimodal state with uh, a multimodal observation model, okay? So any kind of combination is possible. Okay, so here I'm here. If, if I want now to, uh, to move to the implementation of this framework, I, I, I need to, uh, in a classic 4 uh, var framework, uh, I need to define the... Uh, the, both the dynamical models and the observation operator. So here it's a very quick review of the literature with different cho typical choices for uh, the uh, dynamic, first the dynamics. So um, one option for, you can think about the uh, using uh, ocean, ocean models and, and like Nemo or this kind of thing. And then uh, that the uh, for Divor uh, framework applied to, to this model. Uh, but for sure here, the state is not only the sea surface uh, state. I mean, it's the uh, full ocean state. So meaning that the inversion problem is, is much more complex than just uh, the assistive mapping. That, that's one option. If we stick just considering that the state will refer only to sea surface height or sea surface variables, one, one option explored in the literature, especially for SSS mapping, is to consider QG dynamics, in which you have some advection model for the, uh, the vorticity or the potential vorticity. Okay, and you see that here you have an equation like this, where uh, psi here relates to the uh, SSH, and, and Q is a uh, potential vorticity. So, meaning that. Uh, so that has been explored. You can get uh, improvement in the SSH mapping using this kind of prior. Uh, one thing here, this prior is some approximate model, meaning that it may apply for uh, some regions, but not everywhere and for some periods and, and not, not all the time, even if probably on average, it's a relatively relevant uh, approximation. So that's for the, uh, the dynamics. And if we look at the same question in the literature for the uh, SST SSH synergies, uh, one option is con to consider that the SST is specifically transport advected by, by the sea surface current. So um, that's one option. For example, that I knew you explored in a work by the team of Patrick Ganinari with uh, Ibrahim Ayed for uh, interpolation problems where they assume this kind of. Uh, uh, term, advection terms. Uh, another one which is interesting and I, I will refer to is to consider um, the SQG uh, dynamic model. From this, you can get a direct relationship between the, uh, under this dynamic model, you get a direct relationship between the SSH and the SST. And, and interestingly, this relationship is linear. So it's a fractional Laplacian operator. So meaning it's defined in the spectral domain. Uh, but this operator is uh, a filter, okay? Meaning here that, and you see that this filter, uh, up to this filter for a given uh, range of, uh, of scales, the SSH and the SST will share the exact same information, 
Okay, meaning, and this means that under some dynamical modes, some uh, signatures of the, of the SST are similar to uh, the signatures features of the SSH. So that's uh, really interesting in terms of learning because it may tell us that we may be able to, to learn features which may be shared by uh, VSSH and VSST. What's important here is that you have those uh, G and H operator which refer to some kind of filtering. So if you, you need, that won't apply to all the space time scales for the uh, SST and SSH, but just for some kinds of, of scales. And, basically uh, from a uh, few tenths of kilometer to hundreds of kilometers, but the sc scale range to which it may apply is not uh, necessarily well, very well defined. But at least that gives some ideas on the way we could define the observation term. Okay, so now based on this, um, I, I'd like to move to the 4 net and look with how to use the 4 net framework to address those problems. So, um, I won't go in many details. You've seen, most of you have seen this many times before, but uh, again, the reason for which I, I've started with the presentation uh, of the uh, variational data simulation framework is because in the 40 net, we define our architecture uh, at the, from the beginning from uh, a variational uh, formulation. So, uh, and, and the initial basic formulation is this one. So a, the exact same formulation uh, I derived before in this uh, matrix form. And from this variational formulation, we can design uh, some neural architecture, which we use as inputs, the observation data, and will provide you as output the uh, graded field. And what's implemented by the, uh, this uh, neural architecture is some kind of gradient-based descent of the variational cost. And what's interesting in the 40 net is that it's very flexible in the, uh, so basically you, the, the different operators, especially the observation operator and the dynamic operator may be um, predefined. Okay, if you have uh, some prior, you can use them and then they're fixed. They will never be trained. You will only train the, the solver, the way to minimize the rational cost. But you can also consider a trainable uh, formulation in which basically those two operators are stated as uh, uh, networks, nor networks with some parameters to, to be learned from, from data. And, and the learning would be in terms of some minimization of the reconstruction uh, performance or optimization of the reconstruction for performance. Okay, so now the question is, as we have this, how to uh, apply, how to design some 4D net schemes based on, for multimodal inversion purposes. Um, yeah, maybe first before this, just uh, we'll use as baseline for uh, comparison purposes, a version of the 4D net which is which will use as inputs only the altimetry data and, and, and design for SSH mapping. So uh, the only thing I'd like to mention here is that the kind of prior for which we get the best uh, reconstruction, best mapping performance is when we use a unit for phi, for the, the, the dynamic operator or representation of the space-time dynamics. And so meaning that the unit, so it's not some kind of uh, PDE-based or uh, ODE-based parameterization. So there is no explicit parameterization according to differential equation, but the unit applies some kind of space-time uh, or uh, scale decomposition. Sorry. So we have some kind of multi-scale representation of, of, of the uh, SSH variability. And in this setting, we train jointly the unit and the solver. Okay, and both are optimized in, uh, in terms of getting the best possible uh, reconstruction performance. Okay, so now the question is, okay, I'm really on, on where I'd like to go. Now, so now I'd like to have the altimetry data plus the SST as inputs, as observation data, and, and to know how to design my front environment. And the main question is how to, what, what's the underlying variational cost? Because if I have a variational cost, then I can directly define my uh, neural architecture. Just the same as before, I have two options I can explore. The first one is to consider a, a multimodal state. So here, 
it will be really simple. I just increase the dimension of my stage. So I just concatenate the SSH and the SSD, the same as before. So here it should be, sorry, it should be this. Okay. Um, and then the only difference is that the file operator here will still be a unit, but the, uh, basically the size of the input data and output data would be uh, twice uh, as before, because they, we use the same uh, space time resolution for the SSH and SSD in this uh, basic uh, presentation. Okay, but then is that the only difference? Uh, and and or, or maybe the very small or the difference is that you have uh, the mask here uh, for the altimetry data. You there's uh, some gaps. So uh, where for the SST there's there is no gap. So meaning that you uh, omega is the entire domain. That that's one way. So you see here that's very really simple to to get this uh, multimodal inversion. Nothing to 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 add very specifically. Another option is to uh, add some observation term as mentioned uh, before. And basically the way we state this would be to say that, um, okay, yeah, there, so here X is, is just the uh, C surface height, the state, Z is the SST. And the assumption will be that there might be some features which are shared between the SSH and the SST. G of X would be the uh, some features extracted from the SSH. And R H of Z would be the same features but extracting from the SST. So you can look at this as a generalization of the uh, SQG relationship. If you consider a, specific, a linear, um, linear uh, operators and if those linear, uh, operators refer to the uh, fractional Laplacian world. Uh, which is here. So here I may consider two, two formulation here. One, one would be, okay, assuming that the operators are linear, but I, I, it's very simple to consider one, one operator or, or many ones, okay? Because uh, that's just the dimension. So in terms of networks, we, I would just apply a, a convolutional layer. So it's, it's easy to parameterize the, the number of dimension here. So meaning that I can assume that there are not only one feature which is shared between SST and SSH, but many ones. So different features could be different scales, could be different orientation and so on. So that's some kind of generalization of the SQG uh, related uh, synergy as mentioned before. And I, I can also go for nonlinear feature uh, features. So instead of here, instead of considering um, uh, uh, convolutional layers only, uh, then I could consider an anterior or small network with a, a combination of convolutional layers and nonlinear activations. Okay. But you see, it's, 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 uh, given this, I can just plug this, this into the, uh, general, uh, for the framework and, and then we apply the same thing. Okay. If I try to analyze the pros and cons of, of, of those two options, uh, probably the multimodal state is, is really straightforward uh, and you have no additional parameterization. I mean, you, you just change the, uh, again, the dimension of, which is the channel for those uh, with background in PyTorch. So just change the dimension of the channel and, and that's all. And you run the exact same code. Um, one thing is uh, that it's higher dimensional. So meaning it's uh, including for inversion and, and so, uh, meaning that inversion might be more complex uh, to, to, to run, so uh, greater complexity. And in addition, you have no explicit uh, formulation for, um, for the relationship between the SST and SSH. So then you could dig into the network to look at how, how the uh, relationship is encoded in the operator file, but it's not direct, okay? If you look at the uh, second option, here, what's good that you have explicitly this uh, feature extraction set. So you can really look at those uh, features and, and visualize them, for example, to try to understand what has been uh, encoded by the network. Uh, and the other point is you keep the uh, dimension of the version with, 
as the, just the same as the initial SLM mapping, SSH mapping, because the, the state is just the SSH. So no additional complexity here. Uh, one thing here is, uh, I won't address this here, but in this setting, it probably you, it, it's not very good to account for uh, missing data in the uh, Z variable here in the SST. So if you'd like to, uh, to address jointly the, uh, the mapping of two different variables with uh, different data sources for which we, you have gaps, uh, then the, uh, this multi-model observation model won't, won't, won't be a good option. And, and then probably you, you might consider combining those two options. Okay. So now I, I move to, um, so I don't know if you have questions, I, I move more to the experiments now. So for uh, the experiments, we consider the, uh, the boost SWOT data challenge. So which is uh, the uh, configuration. So it's an OSC. So it's based on numerical simulation from NET860. And for, and for this configuration, I, I will uh, show you this, this after. Probably some of you already know, know this, but we have a number of uh, schemes approaches which have been applied applied to this allowing to uh, to to compare to other uh, algorithms um so it's a gulf stream case study region 10 degree by 10 degree it's a one over 20 uh horizontal resolution daily resolution for the altimeter it's a four nadar altimeter plus SWOT configuration and here uh, for the sst i'll consider initially a gap free sst with its one over 20 uh, uh, resolution. For training, we have, uh, let's say, uh, something like nine to eight months for training, something like this. We keep some period of time for validation and, and we've, uh, we have a separate uh, uh, test uh, data period. All the uh, scores I show will be only for the test data. Okay, meaning that for the training, we we train the model considering the training data, and we uh, select the best model uh, with scores uh, evaluated for the validation period. Uh, so now the, the kind of question I'd like to address with this uh, experimental setup would be to know whether uh, which kind of uh, multimodal configuration might work better, whether the multimodal state or the multimodal observation setting, uh, whether I can, I'm able to extract relevant information, relevant features from the SST to get some improvement in, in the construction of the SSH. Uh, is there some interest in considering nonlinear feature extraction step or is the linear uh, features well enough? Uh, yeah, and then one, am I able to learn everything at the same time? Is, is this too complex? And the last solution would be relate more to the, uh, probably to have a more realistic setting for the SST, which might be uh, not gap free and or a different resolution for the SST. So first, they, uh, just to, to let you have an idea of the performance of, of the baseline, Basically, just to say that the uh, 40VAR net uh, framework, just considering the altimetry data, it gets, gets the best score over a number of different methods which have been applied to this uh, OSCC experiment. Uh, so I use this as a baseline, okay, to compare whether I get improvement using the multimodal setting compared to the uh, altimetry only uh, setting. Uh, for the uh, 40VAR net baseline, I have a seven day time window. So meaning that X, the state X is a seven day time window for a 200 by 200 uh, region, because I have this one over 20 uh, space resolution for 10 degree by 10 degree box. And, and for the uh, uh, okay, I use no, a I case. Yeah. Uh, okay, I use a, a two scale decomposition for the SSH. So the unit here is a, apply a decomposition for two scales. Uh, yeah, and you have a performance which is already relatively good. So the question would be whether we can improve this, uh, this um, those scores here. The fact is that those scores, especially the, so this is the, uh, basically the explained variance. So the closer to one, the better. 
uh, this is not very interesting. This is the uh, spatial resolution we reach. So the lower, the better. And, and this is the time resolution we reach in days. So again, the lower, the better. The fact is that those scores are, are not very um, expressive to, to get the differences between different, uh, the different approaches. So I, I use those ones after, uh, afterwards. Okay, so now the first question is uh, whether we get improvements using the multimodal setting and whether the best option might be to consider multimodal state, multimodal observation, or the combination of multimodal observation and multimodal state. So basically here, the best score we get is considering only a multimodal observation. Here are just show the linear. So you see right after that, we can even increase a bit so, so this performance. But for this experiment, um, the best score is for the uh, multimodal observation term. Uh, so we may note that for uh, whatever the type of multimodal setting, we improve the, uh, the baseline. So meaning that uh, whatever the kind of multimodal setting we consider, in any case, we were able to uh, extract relevant information from the SSD to, uh, to improve the reconstruction of SSH. So meaning that uh, all multimodal settings are able to, uh, to, to get relevant information, even if here the, uh, the multimodal observation term is, is the uh, better. It's, it's not clear, but maybe the, uh, the issues with the uh, multimodal state formulation uh, refer to, refer to uh, generation, generalization uh, issues. Probably we have some kind of overfitting here, um, which might be addressed with larger data sets for training. That's... Um, second, second question is whether it's useful to consider a linear and nonlinear, and whether we can consider just one feature or we need more features than just one. So basically, first regarding the number of features, both of the linear and nonlinear, we get better performance where when we consider different features, not not only one. Um, even if you see that the score here is already relatively good when considering uh, only one feature. So the two first one are, are just the MSC which might not be very uh, easy to, to interpret. The last two are, is the uh, relative improvement with respect to the uh, OI, the dux, which is a, a baseline. So the closer to 100 with, with a better, and that's for the uh, SSH and, and for first one here, and for second one, it's for the gradient of the SSH. So the first one is the SSH and, and second one is refers to the uh, sea surface current to some extent. So in both cases, we reach uh, something close to greater than 70% in terms of relative improvement. And you see that then uh, increasing a bit the number of features, we can gain a few additional per, yeah, percent, one on few. Uh. And um, we have the same kind of behavior for the nonlinear. But here, uh, the optimal is uh, to get to, uh, up to 10 nonlinear features. And if you compare this and this, we get some slight improvement considering a nonlinear observation term, which seems um, reasonable and expected because nonlinear means something more complex. One, one, one thing here, sorry is that uh, depending on the uh, nonlinear activation we consider, we don't get the same results. And, and for some experiments with a ReLU activation, we, get, uh, we do not get any improvement. So probably here are things to be explored more in detail regarding the kind of nonlinear activation we consider. Uh, here, a recap using the uh, really the boost SWOT uh, metrics for validation purposes. And with respect to the baseline, and here I have two uh, versions. So the uh, linear version and the nonlinear one. And, and you see basically what I mentioned before. So we improve both the uh, MSC score here and the uh, space and, and time resolution. 
So quantum might say tell you that we could even improve a bit the v time resolution. So, but uh, basically that's where we are uh, relatively. So we close to three days in terms of time resolution, time scale we can uh, solve for this KCD and 0 0.5 degree for in terms of horizontal scale. So some visualization here um, to compare. Okay, would be yeah. Okay, here uh, it's the uh, true field for a given date, and, and here you have the dux, which is some optimal interpolation, which is uh, really the operational baseline, and here you have different uh, version, so here that the 40 variant using only the altimetry data, those are uh, multimodal setting, so this one using the multimodal observation. Uh, term and this one using the multimodal state and and this one I haven't mentioned this before uh, it's uh, just applying a unit network directly for the multimodal inversion so basically using the uh, all the altimetry observation and the ACC observation as inputs to a unit directly to get the po best possible reconstruction uh, maybe here, uh, I assume that you see that uh, visually it's it's clear that we get improvement compared to DUX. But if you look at this, probably uh, you need very good eyes to see any difference between the uh, altimetry only and and um, uh, multimodal version. Uh, yeah, it's it's too small here, but for small details, uh, I, uh, I think in this region, this one. There are small regions where we see uh, small small differences. Okay, it's not very clear. It's an overall one. Uh, that's the reason why I, I've I've looked at the uh, the Laplacians of the vorticity here uh, to see whether we that we get better insights or better visualization of the differences between the uh, different fields. Um, so here, this seems the, the, the best one seems more uh, more um, with less artifacts or uh, fine scale features, which are probably not still physically meaning, meaningful. So probably here we get some kind of better fine scale regulation regarding the vorticity. So which might be what we see in the different uh, metrics. Uh, saying that this one is the, 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 the best core. So this is uh, relatively true for this uh, structure here compared to the, uh, the, the operation baseline. And uh, again, probably the, the best, yeah, it's, it's clear that in any case, you have a strong improvement compared to the uh, operational baseline. So the, visually speaking, it means that, uh, okay, we get this improvement here. When we look at this visually for uh, just spatially speaking, probably considering dynamics would make things uh, more explicit also to, to, to exhibit the differences and, and the kind of gain here we, we consider that um, that's really for, we get improvement for the fine scales, finer scales. So probably we need to adapt and we need to look more into the kind of visualization we could consider to, to get this. But, um, uh, so this model here is referred to a nonlinear uh, multimodal activation, and to me it was not clear whether with this kind of nonlinear activation we might create uh, local artifacts, and indeed it's, it seems it's not the case, and we was rather get uh, something more regular and, and closer to the expected Laplacian of vorticity, so which is a kind of good news. Okay, uh, another thing we can look at, and that's probably the interest of the uh, multimodal observation room, is that we can really look at the uh, features which are extracted from the SST. So again, here, the, uh, the feature extraction step for the SST and the SSH is over space and time, okay? So we extract, so here we have a seven day window for the SST. I just here refer to, uh, to the SST for the center of the time window for visualization purposes. And here I plot, um, you have the uh, feature maps for the, from the SST for the uh, one of the uh, linear multimodal observation model and here that for nonlinear one. So it, it's, I, I, I'm not sure how to interpret this. Probably the first thing is, um, that basically it's more some kind of 
high pass filter applied to VSST. And if you think about the uh, SQG relationship, it says that the uh, SST relates to uh, the SSH through some Laplacian operator. So the SST is some kind of rusticity like uh, um, quantity. But here, the kind of features are, are higher order derivative. So not only the, uh, the vorticity, but going to a higher order. Probably because uh, those features are more localized and it might be a reason for which the, uh, the network goes to, to, to this. And it seems to be the same for uh, the, uh, the linear and nonlinear. Visually speaking, the, it seems that in the nonlinear year, for example, here, you might see here, uh, there might be some kind of eddy detection uh, step, which is not as explicit here. Okay, it's not as strong. The, so probably in the, uh, it seems that in the nonlinear uh, feature extraction step, there is some kind of enhancement uh, of some AD signatures that maybe is true for filament ones, like this one, for example. So probably the nonlinear uh, filter or extraction step, step involves some kind of enhancements of some uh, um, space time patterns which might be the reason for which we also get some, some improvement. The, the last experiment was to look whether uh, changing the uh, resolution of the SST, we, get, we still get some improvement or not. The reason for, for this is that in practice, the observation data for the SST from space, uh, if with relatively gap-free or very small gaps, would be more microwave SST with a resolution of one over four. Uh, so meaning, uh, and not one over 20. And if you go for an infrared uh, SST, then you can get very high resolution, even better than one over 20, but then you, have, you may have many gaps, okay? So here what I've, uh, what I've done is um, instead, of, so for a given uh, train model, okay? There is no retraining here. I just consider my model, but I, I just uh, apply some pre-processing to the SST basically some kind of down sampling, coarsening down sampling and up sampling to, to change the resolution of the SST. So, I, and I, I can do this. Um, then I, I, I've simulated uh, some SST with a one over 10 resolution, one over five, one, one over four, one over two. And the first four, uh, five refer to the, uh, the linear, uh, multimodal setting with the uh, multimodal observation term and this one to the uh, nonlinear. Okay, so they have um, what's interesting. So the, the better resolution, the better the performance. And the main question is to know if there is a, a very strong impact of the resolution of SST or whether it's a, a smooth decrease or up to which point do we get some, some improvement. So the thing is, uh, when we look at the uh, linear version uh, here, and, and that would be here. Uh, for the linear version, we still get uh, some improvement, even if we uh, go to one over four uh, resolution for the SSD, which would be the, uh, some kind of simulation of relatively realistic microwave SSD. So still here, it, it means that we might be optimistic in uh, getting good information from uh, true observation data to, to get imp improvement in the reconstruction of, of the SSH. And it, it's, no more, it's not exactly the case when moving to a nonlinear uh, um, model, which seems more, um, more sensitive to the uh, resolution of the SSD. So, um, so another thing, it tells us that basically the, uh, the scales which are relevant in VSST to get the information to, to, to get some additional uh, uh, reconstruction for performance for VSSH. So to inform VSSH seems to be basically horizontal scales between uh, five kilometer and, and 25 kilometers. Or 50 kilometers, because uh, so meaning that uh, 
and that probably expected the larger scales, which is which are also present in the SSD, are not used because probably they're already present in the SSH data, and so there is no uh, additional gain in, in extracting this information from the SSD, and then the model focus more on the uh, final scale range, which is not uh, present in the SSH data due to the sampling. Okay, so maybe, uh, yeah, a, a recap. So in terms of uh, methodology, methodological issues, uh, what I've shown is a different way to, to get the 4 var net, so a trainable versional data simulation framework in, in different ways to, 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 to get a multimodal setting. And especially here, uh, we show that uh, we can, we're able to train jointly observation operators, the prior and the solver. Um, we can benefit, benefit from the flexibility of the mathematics scheme. You see, you've seen this to play whether we consider multimodal state, multimodal observation, or combination of the two. Uh, and just reusing mainly uh, non parameterization. Okay, we can really uh, uh, reuse the baseline and the same type of uh, architectures and, and then to extend this to this multimodal setting. Um, it's in practice, it seems that the multimodal version with a multimodal observations uh, term is easier to train than the multimodal state, probably due to the uh, lower computation, computational complexity. And one thing would be would be a relatively direct to apply this to uh, multimodal settings for which you have gaps for different modalities. Regarding more of the application to the uh, SSH mapping, so we get uh, some improvement compared to the baseline based only on altimetry data. We can still expect gain uh, for a microwave like SST data. Um, as a, as a presented by by Quentin uh, two weeks ago, that could be that's of interest for SWOT calibration. Um, okay, it's not happy; it's gappy here. Um, that could be then extended to a uh, John mapping of the SSH and SST using gappy uh, SST data and the altimetry data, and. Uh, it would seem natural to extend this to the tracers like motion color, for example, or all other tracers that could be uh, uh, plugged into this in the same way we use the SSD, because somehow there is nothing specific to the SSD in the way we, we develop the model, because we retrain everything. And probably uh, the current change is to know whether we can apply this to uh, real data, which is uh, okay, it's something which is uh, investigated by, by Maxim. To some extent, but uh, still uh, under its way. So that's it. So if you have questions, comments, I would be happy to to answer or to discuss. Yeah, well, no, I have 